Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. As Rahul Gandhi heads for the first full session of the third Narendra Modi government, he can feel comforted that three painful questions dogging him for two decades now have vaporized. The first of these questions, does the BJP or should it take the Congress seriously? Second, does it or should it take Rahul Gandhi seriously? And third, can you bring back to life a party as nearly dead as the Congress? The answers to all three came by the afternoon of the counting day, 4th of June. Not only must the BJP take the Congress and Rahul seriously, his party also sees a realistic route to power in 2029. I am not saying that they are going to get power in 2029, but they can see a realistic route to power in 2029. It will take a lot of doing, right? But it's not looking like an impossibility. It's looking like, looking like a possibility and a plausibility. At the very least, it has the Congress party has sprung back to life and is back in the fight. You will see it through the monsoon session beginning next Monday. This session will have the added tarka or seasoning of the union budget as well. So it's a monsoon session which is also a budget session because this is an unusual year because the election was in the middle of the year and a new government has come into place. The difference the rejuvenated Congress makes will also be evident from how the rest of the opposition conducts itself. You watch that space carefully. Read the op-ed that Trenamul MP Derek O'Brien wrote in the Indian Express. We'll share a link with you with the description. He opens his argument by asking who benefits more from parliamentary adjournments now. The obvious implication is that it's the treasury benches. When the opposition was in a hopeless minority, outshouted, outnumbered, outmuscled and further squashed by the chair, adjournments and walkouts were desperate escape measures. Today, they'd rather be on the wrestling mat or in the akhada, if that sounds more apt in politics, and wrestle. Derek O'Brien's party, the TMC, has actually done brilliantly by itself in West Bengal. It has reduced the BJP to almost a half, just over a half of what it was earlier. It has also contemptuously brushed aside its own India bloc ally, the Congress party, because it chose to carry on with the left parties as a kind of excess baggage. Now, despite these successes, would they, that is the TMC, be so upbeat if the Congress had not come back to life this time? No opposition alliance can be credible without a strong core, a party as its core, a strong party at its core. That is the expectation on which the Congress had been fading so far. Now, this has changed. Even as I write this column, late Friday afternoon as usual, I see on my television screens J.P. Nadda, still the BJP president in his super extended term, speaking in Odisha and focusing mostly on the Congress and the Gandhi family, especially the Gandhi siblings. He calls them educated, illiterate. In fact, in his words, Pade Likhe Anpad. This in a state, Odisha, this in a state where the Congress doesn't count for one bit at least not yet. This leaves no doubt about the answer to so the first two of the three questions we posited from Rahul Gandhi's point of view. For the BJP, the Congress and the Gandhi trio matter. The answers to the third question will come from Rahul himself. Since, since he was the first elected MP in 2004, he has built a political image he'll need to get rid of. This is the image of shoot and scoot politics. Don't blame the social media or the BJP RSS whisper machine, formidable as it is. Don't blame them for it. Two decades in public life is long enough for reputations to be built for better or worse. Until, until the 2024 elections, this was an uncertain commitment from Rahul Gandhi. If he moves on from it now, after this summer's success, he will change not just that reputation, but also answer that most important question. Does the Congress have a chance to win back power? Does the Congress part have a realistic route to power? 
So far, he had had two and a half major successes. In the 2009 Lok Sabha elections, he electrified his party and supporters by winning 21 seats in Uttar Pradesh. Almost all these candidates were his choices, several from Youth Congress, which he then helmed. The second was the 2018 winter victories in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. The half was the Gujarat Assembly election of 2017 when he ran the BJP close. It was an astute campaign built on a coalition of rebellious young caste leaders. It gave the BJP a scare. Modi had to carry out a humongous rearguard campaign to salvage the state for his party. In fact, so much so that if you remember, towards the closing stages of the elections, he had even accused Manmohan Singh of being mixed up with the Pakistanis in the sense that he said there was a dinner at Mani Shankar Iyer's house where the Pakistani High Commissioner came and the former Pakistani ISI chief came and that's where, where Manmohan Singh was also invited and he also attended that dinner. Now, for Modi to go that far, he had to be really concerned how close this election had been and how sweet Modi's victory showed in his speech to his party after the results. Cameras caught tears in his eyes, not something you see often. And we took note of it in a national interest column on 30th September 2017. Again, I will share a link with you with the description below this video. The important thing is that after each one of these, Rahul Gandhi did not stay back to build on what had been achieved. The post-2009 period saw his somewhat curious evolution into a dissident within his own party, culminating in that infamous public rejection of his own party's ordinance on convicted politicians, something that he has regretted multiple times in interviews and statements subsequently. After the state election victories in December 2018, no attention was paid to building a coalition or, or rejuvenating his party. He seemed distracted and disconnected, as he did after Gujarat 2017. Each of these moments could have been a turning point for his politics, but it wasn't to be. That's why even his revival in this general election has drawn skepticism from his supporters. Their skepticism is his rival's hope that one job done, even if successfully, he will lose interest again or get bored, shoot and scoot. That he hasn't done so yet and has continued to be active on the political street, in political debate and on social media signals a significant change. It will give his party hope. Maybe the achievement of reducing Modi well below the majority mark will now motivate him to stay committed. Or maybe a decade of Modi setbacks, humiliation, insults and ridicule, as well as the targeting of the party and its key people by the agencies have collectively brought in a new resolve. If he does stay on and stays focused, the third question is answered. The Congress can then realistically hope for a return to power. At which point, I can bring to your attention two national interest articles on Rahul Gandhi that, that I have written a decade apart. The first, on 6th of April, April 2013, was published in the Indian Express originally and that was headlined, Not Enough Boss. That was taking after Rahul Gandhi's then habit of using the word boss a lot in his conversations. It's a bit like his Takiya Kalam, as we'd say in Urdu a favorite expression because he'll say not like this boss, like this boss. So the headline of this article was not enough boss published on 6th of April 2013. You will have links of all these articles with the description. This is when he took over as the Congress vice president and made his power is poison speech in Jaipur. We then listed in this article what we saw as three fallacies or errors in his politics or his reasoning. The first two pertain to his flawed understanding of Indian inequality and then aspiration. The third was simply about his belief that power is poison. We had then written that he had better reflect on it that in a democracy power is no poison. On the other hand, it's a wonderful gift, an honor and a cherished privilege the voters give to you. Good leaders embrace it with joy, gratitude and humility. That power is poison, we had then written, is a feudal construct. It's a feudal proposition, not a democratic one. The next article on 24th of December 2022 came in the midst of his Bharat Jodo Yatra and raised some of the same questions going forward from the last one. We noted then that he seemed to be enjoying attention, the crowds and the argumentation more than before. 
ही वॉज बिल्डिंग ए कैंपेन ऑन आइडियोलॉजिकल टर्म्स भारत जोड़ो वर्सेज भारत तोड़ो लव वर्सेज हेट सेक्युलर वर्सेज कम्यूनल गांधी वर्सेज सावरकर एंड सीम टू बी क्वाइट एंजॉइंग इट वाइल नोटिंग दिस वी हैड रेस्ड टू मोर क्वेश्चन वन वॉट इज द कांग्रेस वॉन्ट द आंसर एज वी सेड ए लिटिल बिट अर्लियर वॉज सिंपल इजी पावर द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वॉज ट्रिकियर वॉट इज राहुल वॉन्ट डज ही ऑल्सो वॉन्ट वॉट इज पार्टी डज इन विच केस हैज ही चेंज इज माइंड ऑन पावर बींग पॉइजन हैज ए डेकेड इन विल्डरनेस एंड रिडिक्यूल परसुएरिड इम टू सी द वर्च्यू इन पावर द वैल्यू एंड वर्च्यू इन पावर only if the answer to that question is yes can the congress party ever hope to return to power